y'all it's amanda welcome back to my channel as you may know last friday pokemon scarlet and violet generation 9 of pokemon did release so as always we need to go in and figure out what we can do to build a vgc team as quickly and efficiently as possible we'll be needing to build a lot of teams in the near future as the vgc competitive scene ramps up so I want to know what we can do to do that as quickly as we can, as efficiently as we can. So here are all the tools that you're going to need in your toolbox to help you get started building teams. Stick around. Okay, so first things first are IVs. All Pokemon are born with specific IVs that cannot be changed. They can be technically changed, but they cannot be changed for breeding purposes. And of course, you'll want those to be as good as possible. You'll want them to be best IVs. So first off, how do you know what IVs your Pokemon has? Well, you'll need to unlock the judge function, which will allow you to check the IVs on your Pokemon. Once you beat the entire story, including the Area Zero postgame, you'll unlock the judge feature after you talk to the receptionist at a Pokemon Center. After you've done that, you'll want to open your Pokemon boxes, and then when you hover over the Pokemon that you want to check the stats of, you can press the plus button to cycle through a few different things over here on the far right side. One of those things will be the IVs of your Pokemon. So you can see that my starter does not have very good IVs. It only has one best IV, which would be, you know, what we'd be looking for in a Pokemon like this. We'd want six best IVs. So, my Pokemon's IVs suck. How can I make them better? Luckily, hyper training does exist in this game again. What you'll need to do first is get your Pokemon to level 50. No Pokemon less than level 50 can be hyper trained. Then, once you've gotten your Pokemon to level 50, you'll need to go to a Delibird Presence store. They're in most major cities, so you can find them pretty easily. They'll look like this on the outside. And once you've entered, you can purchase a bottle cap under the general goods section for $20,000. Now, keep in mind to unlock bottle caps in the shop, you have to defeat six gems first. Then, once you've gotten the bottle caps you, you need, you'll want to fly to Monte Nevera, which is up here in the mountains. And then, you want to talk to this guy standing behind the Pokemon Center next to this pile of snow. He will hyper train your Pokemon if it's level 50 or higher. So, you'll just talk to him, say, Yes, I'd like to hyper train. And then, you can select the Pokemon you want and you can use either a regular bottle cap which will do one stat at a time or a gold bottle cap which will make all of your pokemon stats best stats now remember that a hyper trained stat will not pass down as a best iv stat through breeding that's what i mean when i say that you can't really change a pokemon's ivs you can change the pokemon stat to match what it would be if it had a best iv but it will not pass down that best iv through breeding now, I will be doing a detailed breeding guide to talk a little bit more about this in the weeks to come, but keep in mind that the traditional way of getting high IV Pokemon is by breeding for them to acquire naturally high IVs. Usually this involves high IV parents like a Ditto passing their IVs down with the help of a Destiny Knot. Okay, and EVs or effort values. Remember that EVs can be changed and they're based on sort of the experience that a Pokemon has had as you've trained them. So first, are my EVs maxed out or not? This NPC, this NPC right here, we're in uh, La Vincia, down here over by the gym between these two buildings right here in this little grassy area. If you speak with her, she'll tell you if your Pokemon's EVs are maxed out or not. So she'll tell me, I'll talk to her, she'll say yes, and she'll tell me if I select a Pokemon, whether that Pokemon has put in all their EVs or not. So if I look at this, we look, my starter has maxed out its EVs, it gets an effort ribbon, and that means there's nothing I can do right now to add more EVs to my starter. If I wanna change my starter's EV spread, then I'll need to remove EVs, which we'll talk about in a second. So the second way that you can check the EVs that your Pokemon has is if you come to the summary, and you scroll over to view the stats right here. If you click the L button to switch the graph view, now you can see how the EV spread has been determined. So you can see throughout the course of my playthrough, I've mostly put EVs into attack, some in special attack, which are being wasted, not great for competitive, and some others spread all the way around. So 
The traditional way to EV train is to battle other Pokemon. So every time you defeat an opposing Pokemon, your Pokemon will gain EVs based on the species of that Pokemon. So for example, Glalie gives HP EVs when defeated, um, Reap gives special attack EVs, etc, etc. So keep in mind that you can look up all of these online and you can determine which Pokemon you should be battling for which type of EV. You can also increase the number of EVs that you get from defeating these wild Pokemon if you equip one of the power items to your lead Pokemon that is gaining the EVs. So again, to get these power items, we will come to the Deli Bird Presence Shop, available in pretty much any major city. We will go to General Goods, and if we scroll, we'll be able to find these power items. So each of these items costs $10,000, and when you equip it to your Pokemon, it will increase the EVs they will gain in each stat. So it does lower speed in battle, each of these items does, but for example, the Power Weight will raise HP EVs gained, the Power Bracer will raise attack, Power Belt is for defense, Power Lens is for special attack, Power Band is for special defense, and Power Anklet is for speed. So if you're training in these EVs, you can use these items to increase the speed at which you gain the EVs you need. Of course, a much quicker way to EV train, although it's much more expensive, is to uh, use vitamins. So once again, here we are at the Chansey Supply Shop. We'll go in and we'll be able to purchase vitamins for $10,000 each. Now each of these vitamins, HP, protein, iron, all of these, now each of these vitamins will increase a Pokemon's EVs in the particular stat by 10. They cost $10,000 each, and you have to complete six badges at least before the Chansey Supply will start selling them. Now, if you want to remove EVs, let's say you want to remove some EVs from your starter so that you can reconfigure the EVs and make it better for competitive, um, you can do that with EV reducing berries. Unfortunately, there is not an NPC in the game right now that will wipe all the EVs for your Pokemon like there was in the Sword and Shield Isle of Armor DLC. So you have to use EV reducing berries to remove EVs from your Pokemon. You can collect these berries just by collecting them from the sparkling spots as you're running around. Just click on the little glimmers and some of them may be berries like this that will let you remove EVs from a particular stat. So for example, this tomato one is for the speed stat. There's an NPC that will sell these berries here in the Porto Marinata market, um, but you have to have completed the water gym test first. And then once you've done that, you can run in here to the market and speak to the NPCs who are giving you bargains to, um, to bid on. So they won't always be berries. Sometimes they can be other items. And if you don't see the item that you're looking for, what you can do is just do a time skip. So save your game, change the date in your Switch to the next date, and then reopen your game. It'll be a new day, and all of the items here in the market will have refreshed. So once that happens, you can check again and see if the item you're looking for is here. Next up is Nature's. And just like in the Isle of Armor, you can find mints in shimmering spots in different places around the world if you're looking to just collect mints to change natures that way. Although, of course, you can also buy nature mints in the Chansey Supply Store. Once you've defeated Rhyme, who is the Montenevera gem leader, um, and get all six badges, not all six, once you've defeated Rhyme, who is the Montenevera gym leader, and get six badges, you can access mints in the Chansey Supply Stores. They will be $20,000 a piece, so make sure that you're saving that money and only buying the mints that you really, truly need. But if you're looking to save on time and you have the money to do it, you can go ahead and purchase them here. And next up we have abilities. If you'd like to switch your Pokemon's ability from one regular ability to the other regular ability, you can use an ability capsule, which is here in the Chansey Supply Store. Once you've achieved all eight badges and completed the whole entire story, they will start keeping ability capsules in stock and you can buy them for a hundred thousand dollars a piece. So again, make sure you really truly need this ability capsule. Don't forget that abilities for a Pokemon that has more than one regular ability, they are offered randomly through breeding, so you can breed a Pokemon with a different ability than the one you currently have, if that's available to you. 
And then of course, in addition to the ability capsules, we have ability patches, which in the past have been used to change a Pokemon's regular ability to their hidden ability. But now for the first time, you can also use an ability patch to change a Pokemon's hidden ability to its first regular ability. If that's not the one you're looking for, you can then use an ability capsule to change its ability from the Pokemon's first regular ability to its second regular ability. Keep in mind though, that if you have a Pokemon with a hidden ability, all of its children through breeding will have a 40% chance to have a regular ability instead of that hidden ability. So since ability patches are such a rare item, you really should save them for times when you really truly cannot find a Pokemon with the hidden ability you want. Now, the ability patch, I can't actually show you one because I don't have one yet, but they can be obtained as a reward after completing Terra Raid Battles. The item comes only from six star Terra Raid Battles, which are the black crystal ones. Those black crystal raid battles will start to appear on the map once you've cleared the Academy Ace Tournament in the post game which I have not done yet, so I do not have any on my map to show you. But just imagine a Black Crystal Terra Raid Battle. It will show six stars when you open it up, and those are the ones that you can get an ability patch from as a pretty rare drop. And the last thing that we may need to change about a Pokemon to get it ready for competitive is its Terra type. In order to be able to change a Pokemon's Terra type, you'll have to first beat Larry at the Medali Gym. And after you've defeated Larry, you can come in here to the Treasure Eatery, and we can talk to the chef in the back left hand corner. He should have a yellow speech bubble now so that you know he has something to tell you. And when you talk to him for the first time, he'll give you 50 normal type Terra shards so that you can practice this on your own. But, uh,. Once you have 50 Terra Shards of any type, you can change that Pokemon's Terra type to the type of the Terra Shards you have. So keep in mind that the best way to get Terra Shards is by doing Terra Raid events and shattering that Pokemon's Terra Jewel. Uh, the type of Terra Shards that you get from wild Terra type Pokemon and Terra Raid events are gonna be determined by the Pokemon's Terra type, not its primary type. So if you did an electric Terra type Bronzor raid, you would get electric Terra sh shards, not steel or psychic Terra shards. You can also get Terra shards by catching or defeating wild Terra type Pokemon or by looking at, again, those gold sparkly spots on the ground. You can sometimes get shards from those, but they're really rare getting them from the ground. So you're most likely to get them from a Terra raid. So it sounds like making a competitive team from scratch is gonna be significantly more expensive in Scarlet and Violet than it was in Sword and Shield. So breeding is gonna become a lot more important to shorten the time that it would take to gather all of the required resources for a team. I'll have a more extensive breeding guide coming up here soon in the coming weeks, but for now, just know that you can breed two Pokemon of the same egg type by picnicking with them. There's no daycare center in the Paldea region, so Pokemon breeders are gonna need to find a new place to get their perfect IV Pokemon with the correct nature and everything they're looking for. So as long as you have two Pokemon in the same egg group in your party, there's a chance that those two Pokemon are gonna breed and create an egg. So for example, if I put my starter and a ditto in my party here, well, I guess any of these Pokemon in my party could breed with a ditto, I'm gonna wanna either make a recipe that gives me egg power or just purchase food that gives me egg power. So I'll buy this mint chocolate ice cream. It will give me level one egg power for 30 minutes. And the egg power will just increase the speed at which my Pokemon create eggs. So I'll come into the main menu and I'll set up a picnic spot right here. And once that has been set up, get rid of these right on. I don't have to do anything. I do not have to run around. I don't have to interact with my Pokemon. I can just sit here right in front of this basket right here. And my Pokemon will produce eggs for me. All of the eggs that come out of this basket are going to be transferred to your boxes. So rem remember that you will have to pull them out of your box into your party if you wanna be hatching them. And also keep in mind that hatching eggs in Scarlet and Violet is exactly the same as it was in Sword and Shield. You just put the eggs in your party, ideally with a Pokemon that has the flame body ability to turn the number of steps that are required to hatch the Pokemon in half. And then when the Pokemon hat is ready to hatch, you'll get a little animation. It'll show you what hatched the end. So you may have noticed, I do have a ditto on my party. That is the quickest way to breed, is to just have a ditto as one of your breeding Pokemon. That way you don't have to worry about which Pokemon are in what egg group. So once I wanna collect my eggs from this basket here, I will just click A, peek inside the basket, take the Pokemon egg. 
And if your Pokemon are creating multiple eggs in the time it takes you to check them, they will stack up. So um, you don't have to worry about constantly checking the basket. If the basket is full, if the basket has an egg in it and one of your Pokemon produces another one, they'll both end up in the basket. You're not losing out on eggs just by taking a while in between checks. So obviously we're gonna need a lot of money to produce competitive teams in the future. I don't know that anyone has come up with the perfect way to quickly farm money or LP in order to buy vitamins and other items necessary to build teams. But one of the fastest way is just by doing Terra Raid Battles. So you do Terra Raid Battles, and if you approach a crystal, even if you don't do it, even if you don't do the battle, you'll still get 500 link points just for checking it. Very similar to the way that approaching raid dens and clicking on them would give you watt points in Sword and Shield. Even if you didn't do the raid, you would still get a certain amount of watt points just for checking the den. And if you want to do a lot of raid battles very quickly without having to run all, run all over the map, you can make sure that you're connected to the internet and then go to the Pokey Portal here on the main menu. And once you've done that, you can click on Terra Raid Battle and you can very quickly jump in to raid battles and do them over and over again to farm a lot of money and treasures that way. So when you finish a Terra Raid Battle, you'll get a lot of special treasures. This is stuff like Stardust, Pearls, Tiny Mushrooms, Pretty Feathers, Rare Candies. All of these are gonna be helpful in order to help you build teams because Rare Candies are great for leveling your Pokemon up and all of those other treasures can be sold for money. So it's not a bad way to farm money. Also make sure in order to farm money that your active party Pokemon has an amulet coin equipped to them. So you can see in my party that my starter here has an amulet coin equipped. That just means that I'll get double the prize money from battle. So as I'm wandering around, I'm still finding trainers that I haven't bought yet. And when I do fight them for experience and money, I will get double the money out of them. Now, if you want to get the amulet coin, you will need to go back to Medali in West Province, right here. Oh, we're actually right there. And the man in this Pokemon Center will give you the amulet coin if you have bought at least five of the Pokemon trainers in West Province Area 3. Now, another way that you can farm money is by using Cantonian Meow. So Meowth has the move Payday, which will increase the money you earn at the end of a battle. And then if you give it an amulet coin to hold on top of that, it will increase the amount of money you earn at the end of a battle even more. So Meowth spawn everywhere. You can find them all over the place. And then you can fight high level trainers with Meowth in order to farm money off of them. So the uh, Academy Ace Tournament in the post game gives quite a lot of money if you use this method. It's not particularly fast, but it is a method that's guaranteed to give you a lot of money if you win the battles. You can also earn a lot of money if you fight the trainers at the Team Star Training Center after you defeat the story, again in the post game. But keep in mind, these are difficult battles, so you wanna make sure that you go in with high level Pokemon to help you take them down. And as always, we will talk about more VGC content and topics up here in the future. We'll talk about some of the new Pokemon, some of the new items, some ideas for team building. Don't forget we'll have an in-depth breeding guide about how to do the best possible breeding to do team building as quickly as possible. But I wanted to get this out here because this was information that frankly I wanted to know and wanted to have all collected in one place so that it would be really easy to get started building teams for VGC. So as soon as I finished my Pokedex, we're gonna get right on looking into some of these new Pokemon and see what are the best strats and team compositions we can come up with. So that was a not so quick overview of everything you can do to help you build teams in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. I hope it was helpful. Let me know down below what other tricks you may have picked up in the last week or so since the game's release. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, as always, like this video and subscribe to the channel to see more like it. I'll see y'all later.